All right, here we are, one more video. This one we're going to derive the speed of sound equation because we're going to need it. So let's go over speed of sound, which you've probably seen before, but you might not have derived the equation. All right, so speed of sound, let's go over this. Now, obviously, the speed of sound is going to play a big role in aerodynamics. So let's put that on here. All right, so speed of sound plays a large role in aerodynamics. All right, so we're going to get our equation. Now, first thing we're going to do is, let's draw a little picture here. So we're going to have some noise. All right, so we make a noise. Now, what's going to happen is that's going to create a a wave, right? So we got this sound wave. Now this is going to be ahead of the wave. Let's say ahead of the wave. And then this is behind the wave over here. Can't spell behind. All right. So we've got ahead of the wave, behind the wave. The wave is going that direction. Okay. So it's traveling this way. Now before we go on, let's write sound wave is going to be moving to the left with a velocity through stagnant air. All right, so that's the scenario. We make a noise. It's got this sound wave. It's going to move to the left. And if you were to look at your pressure, your density, and your temperature, You've got those terms ahead of the wave. So we just got pressure, density, temperature. Now, once this sound wave comes through here, we're going to have changes in these parameters. So here behind the wave, this would be, you know, after the wave passes, we're going to have pressure, but it's going to be pressure plus a change in pressure. Then we're going to have a density plus a change in density. And then we've got a temperature plus a change in temperature. All right, and the speed of sound we're going to say is A. All right, so A is going to be our uh, variable that we're going to use for speed of sound. Okay, so let's put velocity is going to be A. All right, so now we've got that. So just note that, you know, the sound wave causes us to have a change in those parameters. Now what we need to do is derive an equation for A. Okay, so that's what we'll do next. And we're going to start off with our continuity equation. So remember, that's conservation of mass. Now, if we go from one point to the other, then we're going to have row one, A1, V1. Remember, that's velocity. And then that's got to equal row two, A2, V2. Okay, so we got our two points. And then we got a conservation of mass. Now V, this is velocity, so I'm going to replace that with A, okay? And for like my density, I'm going to replace that with the, you know, rho plus dp term. So if we do all of that, we're going to get our original density that's over on this side times A1. Now V1, we're going to say is A. And then that's going to equal the density over here, which will be rho plus d rho. We'll have a2. And then our velocity, well, we're going to have a change in that also. So we're going to have a plus dA. OK. All right, so now we've got this. Now I'm going to say that a1 equals a2 because I don't have a changing area. So if this is the case, then those two are going to drop out. So that leaves me with rho times a equal rho plus d rho times a plus d a. So now we've got that. Okay. Now, what I'm wanting to do is solve for a. So if you notice, I got a in a couple places here. So we need to work on that and simplify this. So if we go through here, we multiply everything out. We get rho times a on this left side. 
equals rho times A, and then we're going to have plus rho times dA, plus A times D rho, and then plus dA D rho. All right, so now we get that. And again, remember, we're trying to solve for A. Okay, so if we've got that, a couple of things. If you look, I've got this rho times A term on both sides, so obviously that's going to go away. And this term right here, we're going to set this equal to zero because that's typically pretty small. So we can just kind of neglect that term. So if we neglect this and these two are canceled out, then that's going to leave us with zero equals rho dA plus A d rho. And now what we're going to do, remember I'm looking for A. I'm going to bring this term over. So I'm going to have negative A d rho equals rho dA. And then let's solve for A. So basically I need to divide by this d rho, and we're going to move the negative over. So it's going to give me A equals negative rho dA over d rho. Okay, so that's one version of the equation for the speed of sound. Now, this is not overly useful to us because we've got these differentials in here. We don't want those in there. So now we're going to get rid of those. And the way we're going to get rid of those is by going back to that linear momentum equation that we had before. Okay, so if you recall, we had that dp equals negative rho a dA. So in the original equation we had, we had rho v dV, right? Where v was velocity. So I just replaced the velocity with a because that's the speed of sound that we're looking at. Okay, so if this equals this, well, let's see what we've got. Notice I've got negative rho dA right here, right? Well, I've got negative rho dA in here. So if we look at that, we can kind of make some substitutions here. All right. So now if we write it out, what we're going to have, if we replace the negative rho dA with dP over the a term here. Let's write that out. So we're going to have dp over a equals negative rho dA. So let's substitute this for this, and that's going to give me dp over a over d rho. Now I want a on the same side, right? I have a over here and here. So once I multiply this over here, what are we going to get? We're going to get a squared equals dp over d rho. Okay, so now I've got that. Well, what am I going to do with that thing? Because that's still differential, right? Well, first of all, let's take the square root, and then we'll figure out what else to do with it. Okay, so now we've got this. I want to get rid of these differential terms. All right, so. Let me go to another page. So we're starting out there. And before we can go any further, let's write down this little note. So flow through sound wave has no heat addition. And it's going to have negligible friction. So what does that sound like? If we have no heat being added and we're going to neglect friction, that sounds like isentropic flow, right? So that's what we're going to have. All right, so we're going to assume we've got isentropic conditions here. And that's going to allow us to get an easier equation than this. Okay, one where we can just plug in some numbers. Okay, so now we'll get an easier equation to use. All right, so we're going to have P2 over P1, and then that's going to equal rho 2 
over rho 1 raised to the power of gamma. So these were those, or this is that equation that we covered before when we covered isentropic flow. And we're going to be able to use that on this uh, equation here. So now I've got a ratio of pressure and density. So I want to get the same kind of thing over here. So if I reorganize this equation, I can have P2 over rho 2. That's not squared. That should be alpha. So rho 2 is raised to the power of alpha. And then that's going to equal P1 over rho 1 raised to the power of uh, gamma. Did I just say alpha? It's not alpha, it's gamma. And then that's going to be equal to a constant, which we're going to call C. All right, so this ratio here is always going to be the constant value C. Now, if that's the case, let's just write it in general terms without these little subscripts. We're going to have the pressure over the density raised to the power of gamma equal to C. Now let's solve this for pressure. So pressure is going to be C times rho to the power of gamma. Now I want dp and d rho, so I need to get that. So what I'm going to do is take the derivative of both sides with respect to the density rho. All right, and if I do that, I get dp with respect to rho equals d over d rho times c rho to the power of gamma. All right, so now this right-hand side, if you actually go through and take the derivative of this expression with respect to rho, you're going to get c, because that's a constant, times gamma times rho raised to the power of gamma minus 1. All right, so now we've got that. And this is that fraction we've got right here, right? Pretty convenient. Okay, so now we've got that. Now let's go ahead and make a couple of more, a couple of substitutions here. So let's go down here because I'm starting to write at an angle. Okay, so now I already said that C, which is our constant, is equal to this. So let's go ahead and plug this in right here. Okay, so if we do that, our dp with respect to rho here is going to be rho, or not rho, pressure over gamma to the power, I keep screwing up guys, pressure over density to the power of gamma times this expression right here. So gamma times rho to the power of gamma minus one. Now that if you go through and simplify and everything, you're going to end up getting gamma times pressure over rho. Okay, so we simplified it quite a bit. So now we've got this. So with that, we know a is the square root of dp over d rho. Well, I know that this equals this. We just showed that, so let's put that in here. Now I've got that. So now I've got an equation for the speed of sound that's a function of pressure and density. Well, what if I've got temperature? All right, this one doesn't help me any. So you could use ideal gas law and exchange the P over rho with R times T. So then that'll give you the square root of gamma times R times T, where T is temperature. And then this would be A. All right. So your speed of sound is a function of temperature. And now we've got this nice, simple equation. We can plug in our values, get our speed of sound. Okay, so pretty useful equation and we'll use it quite a bit. So last topic before we move on is we wanna cover what Mach number is. All right, and before we get to Mach number, Notice that we've got pressure and density, and then we have this temperature, right? So that means our speed of sound can change from point to point in our flow. Because we never said that density is constant, right? We've got compressible flow at times. And pressure could change, temperature could change. All right, so speed of sound varies from point to point. 
Okay, so it varies from point to point in the flow. Okay, so now that we have that, let's talk about Mach number. Now for high speed flows, you usually hear about Mach number. All right, so let's go over how we calculate that. Now our equation is really simple. Mach number, all it is, is it's a basically a ratio of V over A. That's all it is. Really simple equation. Okay, let's label what these terms are. So V is going to be the velocity of, you know, the flow at a certain point. So we got that. A is the speed of sound. And remember, it changes from point to point, so you gotta make sure you're using the right A value. And then M is just the Mach number. So anytime you see M, that's Mach number. All right, guys, sorry about my dog. She insists on being in here with me. All right, so that's how we get Mach number. Notice you've got speed and then speed, so there are no units, okay? So no units to worry about here, which is a good thing. Now we've got a couple of categories. So if Mach number is less than one, what kind of flow do we have? Y'all probably already know. That's gonna be subsonic flow, right? Now, if M is equal to one, well, that's when we have sonic flow. All right. And then finally, when M is greater than one, what kind of flow do we have? Supersonic. Okay. So that's what we've got. So anytime you hear or you read, you've got supersonic flow, well, you know that M is greater than one. So that means V is greater than the speed of sound, right? You're traveling faster than the speed of sound. If it's subsonic and you know M is less than one, well, that means the denominator is bigger, so you're going slower than the speed of sound. And obviously if it's sonic, V and A are equal to each other, okay? So there you go. All right, so we're gonna leave it off here. We'll do an example uh, in class next time. See y'all then.